Okay, so let's continue here and hopefully we'll end it off. If not, we'll make a fourth part and hopefully end it off on that one. So I'm going to bring this out because the Most High Yahweh revealed this to me. And I want to share it with the sincere, right? So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 16, it says, The Most High made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. So we already know, right, that this is talking about the sun and the moon. But more importantly, the greater light here to govern the day is talking about his name. And the lesser light to govern to govern the night is talking about the wisdom that was created with him from the beginning of time. Okay? This is why it says he also made the stars, right? And then it tells you how the stars give their lights. So, again, you know, this is just for those who are going to get it through the Spirit of the Most High. And uh, we'll back it up with Proverbs 20 and 20. If someone curses their father or mother, their lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. Again, the greater light is Yahweh, our Father. The lesser light is His Word, our Mother. And how do you get wisdom? Well, through reading his word. How are you safe? By trusting in his name. So this is why it says, if someone curses their father or mother, their lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. To prove it, we'll go ahead and read Psalms 84 and 11, if you're still not sure. Look what it says. For Yahweh, our God, is a sun and a shield. Yahweh bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Okay. What it says here, for Yahweh our God is a sun. So again, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. Which represents our father and our mother, right? And this is why the other nations, the other nations, they worship the heavenly race you see that but we worship Yahweh our God who has no image who has no form this is the same reason why the Most High Yahweh told Adam to, to uh, do not call the Sun God or the moon God so let's go ahead and read Proverbs 8 and 22 where it says Yahweh brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old who is this talking about? This is talking about the excellence of wisdom. You see that? Yahweh brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. Again, the Most High made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. Why do you think it says this here? In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Right? So those who meditate on the words of Yahweh day and night, those who trust in the name of Yahweh day and night, they will be careful to do everything written in, in the words of Yahweh. They will be the ones who will be prosperous and successful, right? They will be the ones who will not be worshiping any images or forms of God, right? That's what it means by being careful to do everything written in it. That's what it means to meditate on it day and night this is why it says this here let's go ahead and show you that in Jeremiah 33 and 20 this is why Yahweh says if you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night so that day and night no longer come at their appointed time then my covenant with David, my servant, and my covenant with the Levites, who are priests, ministering before me, K 
can be broken and David will no longer have a descendant to reign on his throne. Okay, so this is why it says this here in Isaiah 59 and let's start off at 19. From the west, people will fear the name of Yahweh, and from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent up flood that the breath of Yahweh drives along. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins. You see that? To those who are willing and obedient, those who are going to. Uh, be you know willing to sacrifice unto their God a contrite heart and a broken spirit to those in Jacob who repent of their sins declares Yahweh as for me this is my covenant with them says Yahweh my spirit who is on you right again the most high Yahweh made male and female in his image my spirit who is on you will not depart from you and my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips on the lips of your children and on the lips of their descendants from this time on and forever says Yahweh you see that because they're gonna be meditating on the words day and night you see that the Most High Yahweh made two great lights the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. Now we're going to read Isaiah 58 and 11. Yahweh will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Why? Because Yahweh, our God, will revive the hearts of the contrite and those who are broken of spirit you see that that's what it means to be revived okay you will be like a well watered garden it's talking about your fruitful thoughts you understand that you have to remember Satan is the one that takes away Satan is the one that destroys and tries and tries to wither your crops that's in your land but the most high Yahweh is the one who gives you the crops he waters your land in order for you to uh, grow your fruitful thoughts all right so remember that Satan got no power over the most high Satan takes away Yahweh gives Psalms 119 and 103 how sweet are your words to my taste sweeter than honey to my mouth this is talking about our mother okay I gain understanding from your precepts therefore I hate every wrong path your word is a lamp for my feet a light on my path do you understand this is why the lesser light was created to govern the night which is talking about the word of the Most High okay Yahweh brought me forth as the first of his works be before his deeds of old alright so now we read uh, Proverbs 8 and 11 for wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with her I wisdom dwell together with prudence I possess knowledge and discretion So, you know, this is the reason why it says here in Hosea 11 and 4, I led them with cords of human kindness. Who? Yahweh, our Father. Alright, this is why he's our Father, because this is what a Father does. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. To them I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent them, sorry, and I bent down to feed them. So, you know, this is why the Most High Yahweh says He is the one that will guide you if you trust in Him, right? But again, if you turn away from Yahweh, your God, well, 
His words will be against you then. So this is why we're going to read in Jeremiah 6 and 7 now. Where it says, uh, talks about Yerushalayim's final warning. As a well pours out its water, so she pours out her wickedness. Violence and destruction resounds in her. You see that? It's talking about in their mind. That's what their, you know, their their temple is full of violence and destruction. There's no peace in the in these people's minds. These people who are into religion, these people who are in these uh, cults and these Hebrew Israelite camps out there. Violence and destruction resound in her. Her sickness and wounds are ever before me. Take warning, Yerushalayim, or I will turn away from you and make your land desolate, so no one can live in it. This is what Yahweh Almighty says. Let them glean the remnant of Yasharel as thoroughly as a vine. Pass your hand over the branches again, like one gathering grapes. To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so they cannot hear. The word of Yahweh is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. This is why it says here in Jeremiah 2 and 22, Although you wash yourself with soap and use an abundance of cleansing powder, the stain of your guilt is still before me, declares the sovereign Yahweh. Which we're going to talk about the stain of Yahweh's guilt, of Yahshua's guilt, of Yahweh's guilt. Okay? Against the whole family. That's why the Most High Yahweh says this here again. To whom can he give warning and who will listen to him? Their ears are closed so they cannot hear. The word of Yahweh is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. That's why they have no wisdom. That's why Hosea 4 and 6 says that my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Why? Because they're too busy giving into pleasure and corruption. And we just read, I think in the first part of this video, how whoever loves pleasure will become poor okay so again everybody right they find pleasure in money and wealth rather say they find pleasure in dressing nice they find pleasure in hooking up with people but they don't find no pleasure in the word of Yahweh okay so as far as the people who trust in Yahweh their God, look what it says here. But I am full of the wrath of Yahweh, and I cannot hold it in. Pour it out on the children in the street, which we're going to talk about that most high willing in a few. So it says, pour it out on the children in the street, and on the young men gathered together. Both husband and wife will be caught in it, and the old, those weighed down with years. Why? Because they're complacent all right just because you know you are whatever age it does not mean that you cannot learn this you can unlearn the things that they taught you and you can learn this okay you can so this is why the wrath of the most high are going to be upon these people because a lot of these people here are just going to be complacent they're going to be arrogant they're going to be you know too busy worrying about other things that will not be able to save them in these times and in these days right so this is the stain of the guilt that is ever before the Most High Yahweh. Okay? Let's go ahead and show you this here, right? In Jeremiah 2 and 22. The stain of your guilt is still before me, declares Yahweh. So our people is given into corruption. You see what I'm saying? Our people, they out there doing all kinds of violence, right? Our people, they love themselves some voodoo doodoo, some santeria, right? This is the stain of the guilt. Your idols that you people worship, your religions that you love. This is what the Most High Yahweh was talking about, right? So let's go ahead and show you this here. You got the Vatican red going on. You got Freemason blue going on. All of these secret societies, 
all of these secret subliminal messages that, that, that they're putting in your face. This is what it means. You're poor and understanding the things that's going on around you, right? You're too busy out there fighting each other. Bloods versus Crips versus Nietas and Latin Kings and whatnot, right? But see, you got to understand that in these times and in these days, the Most High Yahweh says that if you don't turn to Him, then guess what? You're no different than the enemy, okay? You're doing the will of your enemy. This is what it is. This is witchcraft right here. Okay, this is witchcraft. You understand that? So again, you know, the Most High Yahweh says, To whom can he teach knowledge to? You see? Who's going to listen? The word of Yahweh is offensive to them, right? You know, because why? I probably might get some hate comments, right, for some gang members. Oh, what's up? What's up, brother? You don't like the color red? You don't like the color blue, right? So, you know, the word of Yahweh is offensive to them, which, you know, I know plenty of brothers and sisters that used to be in gangs or are in gangs and guess what sometimes I break bread with them speaking about the word of Yahweh and they don't take it offensive you see that they don't take it offensive at all alright so the only people that are going to take it offensive are those who are complacent those who like to believe lies those that do not know what their enemy have done to them let's go ahead and read Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 15 woe to him who gives drink to his neighbor pouring it from the wineskin till they are drunk so that's what's going on with our people out there they they drunk giving over to corruption so that they can gaze on their naked bodies see that's what the enemy does he gave you these things so that you can be out there representing it okay so that you can be out there taking pride in it turning you away from your god you see that that's the trap but you too busy out there wanting to kill your own brother because of a color. Right? But the Most High Yahweh says that in these times and in these days, it does not matter about color. Many peoples of many languages are going to come to worship Yahweh, their God, whether you are in a gang or not. And you see that? That's the past. All of that don't matter now. It's time for you to awake from confusion. It's time for you to, you know what I'm saying, stop drinking that wine that the enemy is giving you. Because that's what it is. This is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that our people are out there falling, dying left and right. Because why? Because they are drunk. Drunk on madness. Proverbs 23 and 31. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. You see that? Look what it says here. Your eyes will see strange sights. You see that? The voodoo doodoo. And your mind will imagine confusing things. Listen. The mind. If you don't take care of your mind. The most high Yahweh says that your mind will be wasted away. Alright. Your mind will imagine confusing things. You will be waiting for somebody who supposedly died for your sins. And is coming back to pick you up. You will be hoping that your government is going to save you from disaster and everything else. This is what it's talking about. Okay, so this is what happens when, when, you know, when you're drunk on the lies of the enemies. Right? Let's understand this here. This is the stain of the guilt that is ever before the Most High Yahweh. So we're going to read this here. This is from the book of Adam and Eve. And uh, this is chapter 20, right? And it says here, verse 2, But as to this, Jenon, Satan came into him in his childhood, and he made sundry trumpets and horns, and string instruments, cymbals and psalteries, and lyres and harps, and flutes, and he played on them at all times and at every hour. And when he played on them, Satan came into him, sorry, into them, so that from among them were heard beautiful and sweet sounds that ravished the heart. Then he gathered companies upon companies to play with them. And when they played, it pleased well the children of Cain, who inflamed themselves with sin among themselves, and burnt as with fire, while Satan inflamed their hearts.